A special thank you to our sponsor for today's video, Squarespace. More on that later. Do you know what it is? I have a remote for this camera, namely this remote here. I'm a meter away from this camera. I could literally just switch it on. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to this week's video. Now then, I'm really sorry. I feel like creeping into a corner because I told you this video would be out a long time ago. You feel me? I think I told you that this would be out like, I don't know, a month ago. Maybe it's even two months. Who's even following? Are you following? You might be following. I'm not following. So essentially, I have already completed on this channel a Monstera collection video and an Anthurium collection video. And in the Anthurium video, because there were a lot in there, I said, listen, if you think this is a problem, philodendron are going to be ridiculous because honestly, probably the thing I have the most of in here. That said, every single week I've been wanting to do the philodendron collection video. However, there are so many things in this unit. I, I don't know where to begin, guys. I don't know where to begin. So I've had to sort of come to a bit of a what's the word? A, a temporary solution? What's the word I'm looking for? Come to a compromise? So essentially, I'm going to have to do this in sections, okay? And it's just, it is what it is. There is no other way of doing this because as of today, I can't really, just the way things are in here, there's plants all over the floor. I can't really get my scissor lift out to get up to some of the shelves to get some of the plants that are up at the top. So I picked a selection of philodendron here that I'm going to talk about as part of the philodendron collection. Some of them are here with me. I think I've stuck in a few pictures as well, just to keep it a bit mixed up. We'll probably just do the pictures after that in case you're not interested and you want to see actual plants. And we're going to go through my philodendron collection. So this is part one. There will be more parts coming. You might have to wait a little bit of time for them because I'm filming this video and a couple of others before I go on holiday. I'm on holiday for two weeks and needless to say, I cannot do these videos while I'm not here while I'm on holiday. Without further ado, let's just get started. They're not in any particular order. There's a few variegates, few non-variegates, just kind of depends. No particular order. We have part one of my philodendron collection. And starting off really strong, in my opinion, would be this guy. Look how cool he is. Literally, look how cool he is. Mm, that looks really nice. I'm just staring at it in the viewfinder. It's quite a nice thumbnail there, actually. So this here is my gorgeous Philodendron Gloriosum. It is by no means the only one I have. I literally have a problem with these guys. I must have, oh my God, it could even be up to 500 of these things. I don't even know, I don't even know. Now they come in different forms. I will say this very, very quickly because we're going to gloss over every plant. They come in different forms. This here is Gloriosum. I mean, it's kind of round form, but it's also white vein. Now I will absolutely do a video on Philodendron Gloriosum types for you. It's just going to take me a little bit of time because I essentially have to get all all of my gloriosum down and go through them and identify what I think are different types. Long story short, I've seen some things on the internet and I don't necessarily agree with it because I've seen so many that some of them are kind of betraying what's on the internet. So I want to go through that at some point, but until then, just take this as a representative sample, you could say, of Philodendron Gloriosum. These are nearly everywhere now, at least if you're in the UK, I'd like to see you can get one of these if you want. Not necessarily this type, but I'm sure you can find something if you want it. I don't know how many types there are, call it four, maybe, maybe a bit more, I'm not sure. And they're all slightly different, but generally they all do the same thing. They all grow the same way. This is one of my favorites, the white vein. I absolutely love dark form to the point where I think I may only have, oh, maybe one or two of them. I sold one a while ago and I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done that. But that is him anyway. This represents Philodendron Gloriosum. Honestly, what are you doing? Get one. I rave about these all the time. They are a crawler, if you wanted to know. Hopefully you can see that in the pot. They grow a longer surface rather than up one. And he has reached the end of his pot. He probably needs a little bit of help. So he probably needs repotting or cutting or whatever we want to do with him. That is him. It's Philodendron Gloriosum. Literally my favorite. He's absolutely gorgeous. The next philodendron, and again, they are in no particular order. This here, now he doesn't actually look great. He doesn't, because he's young. And this type of plant just, it just doesn't look great when it's young. But I promise you they are quite sexy. This here is philodendron majesty, okay? He is rather cute and rather dark. You may notice this if I show you this up to the camera here. Can you see how dark and sexual he is? He's a very sexual plant. So his main characteristic is he is dark, he's matte, we should probably just call him matte, he's cool, and his stems, less so on this one I think, but the stems are very very dark and also matte. They're not full black but they're pretty close. A lot of other plants like this, even the Dark Lord, they're a little bit more purpley in nature, 
This is just a lot more sultry. And I promise you, if you haven't seen one of these things mature, you need to have a look because if you like goth plants or dark plants, seriously, this might just take it for you. Like, I, I can't even tell you that enough. They're so, so, so nice mature. You might really, really enjoy these. So that is Philodendron Majesty. I just wish I had a nice big one to show you. I'm going to have to try and pull one or get something mature because they are so, so, so pretty. They basically grow leaves kind of like a coffin shape when they come out. So they're dark and they're pointy and it's kind of like a coffin shape. Oh, so nice. So don't be fooled by this little guy. They're very, very beautiful plants. We may as well keep the whole dark plant theme going for just a little bit because I do have one more after this that's on the dark side. But this here, if you can't already tell, is Philodendron Pink Princess. And I quite like this plant. It's more pink than most, so that's a good start. But it is exhibiting all the things that we hate in Pink Princess when it comes to new growth. So obviously it's been winter. This new growth is very, very small. It's actually grown away from the light for a bit. Long story, but I put a bunch of plants to film this video a while ago in front of the living wall. So I took them out from under the lights. There's this one and the next plant I'm going to show you. They were sat there for three weeks, maybe more. And both of them have pushed out the smallest leaf you can imagine just from being in the dark. So I'm a little bit upset about it because this was going quite nicely, but now it's not. The only other thing that annoys me is this right here. This is not something you ever want. This is like that scene from Cinderella when the ugly sister puts on the slipper, the missing shoe, and their foot just buckles in it. That's essentially what this is. Can I pull it out? <gasps> I'm actually pulling it out. Uh, yes, I've got it. I've got it. Don't try this at home. Literally, that shit should come with a warning, shouldn't it? So there you go. That's what happens. Usually that means it's not enough humidity, guys. Sometimes not enough light. A lot of the times it's not enough humidity. So if that's happening to you and you're getting Cinderella syndrome, maybe make sure your humidity is good and your light as well. Because to be fair, my humidity is good in here. The light probably did that. It's probably stopped it from coming out a little bit. So there you go. But it's a nice plant. They are in garden centers now. You might struggle to get a really pretty pink one. You might have to go private if you want something bigger and prettier. But they are kind of worth it. I just... I don't know. I like them. I don't hate them. Right. I don't hate them. I like them. I just, the, the growth pattern's just not for everyone, is it? It's not for everyone. And when it, when it does this, it's like, okay, so how am I going to come back from this now? How am I going to come back from this now? It's going to look stupid now. I'm probably going to have to cut the head off it. And then it's going to look really stupid when it grows. So I've kind of just balked my plant. Philodendron Pink Princess. He is still very nice. See, that is, that is cute. That is cute. That's a cute thumbnail, but he a bit annoying. And now, please welcome the other thing that I left in front of the wall that I thought would be great for this video because it looked really good at the time and now it's growing a baby leaf and it upsets me because this looks dumb. This looks dumb. But this is a plant that I feel a lot of people are into, even still. They hit the market. I think I talked about them and I'm not saying I did this. I'm just saying it correlates in the timeline. But I talked about these in a video. I hold them in. Loved them. Everyone loved them. And the supply went, put the price right up. Literally, guys, the price probably quadrupled on these things since then. And I don't think they've come down. So even now, I think these will cost you a little bit of money. If you're looking for a fast and reliable way to create and run your own website, you should give Squarespace a try. Squarespace is an all-in-one solution for creating your own website from scratch using a variety of modern and sleek templates. They're really customizable so you can have a website that's unique to your brand in no time. I've used Squarespace now for well over a year for the Red Plant Shop and it's working really, really well for me. You can filter the templates on the website by type. I found a nice one here for someone wanting to start a blog. I just really like the layout of this one and it's called Brower. You can preview it as well before you try it and it gives you a dummy website to click around just to see if you like it before you actually commit to it. If you want to create a really sleek looking website, either for an online store or maybe you're working on your own blog, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Kaylee Ellen to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's it from voiceover me. Back to the video. And that's not people being greedy. That's because the supply put the prices up and that's what you've got. I don't have many of these. I maybe have about five or six. And I am propagating from them. So you can see propagation on here. But this is, by the way, this is Philodendron Squamiferum blood or black or whatever. I think it's got a few different names. Generally, if you see this, if someone says it's blood, someone says it's black, I think, can't confirm, I think it's the same plant. I think it's just a naming thing. I bought them in as blood. That's why I bought them in. So that's why I've called them. Not saying that is the name, but that is what I bought them in as. They are, they're really good. So again, if you like, if you like dark things, then this is the one for you because 
The leaves are like this. Literally, no camera trickery. They are that dark. If you don't mind a bit of hairiness, if you know what I'm saying, it is winter, ladies, then you might like this as well. It's not completely ridiculous. I'll show you a bigger leaf at the bottom. It's not completely ridiculous, but it is quite nice. And on the back, you have a little bit of that. Now, they can get even redder than that, by the way, and I don't know if I have a picture or not. They can really, really come in quite a blood red colour. Any of the old ones blood red? Not really. It's a bit more dull. That's a bit more red there, I think. So they can come in very, very sexy. So yeah, these might set you back. I don't think it's anybody's fault. It's supply and demand. It's a supply catching on, and that's where we're at. I'm propagating them and bringing them out slowly. Do they propagate well? They're okay. I think they're about 5 out of 10. I, I need to really think about it more. I need to collect what I have propagated and have a little look at them, see how well they've grown. But that's that anyway. Oh, and this is the tiny little leaf at the top. <laughs> Literally, I'm so upset about that. Look at the state of that. Even the newer leaf, it's gone back big since it's been moved back. Like, literally, I've ruined it. So all I do here is I just ruin plants. So that's him. That's Philodendron, Squamiferum Blood. Very, very nice. Ooh, that is quite sexy, is it not? Not very easy to get. He's in moss. It's just how he came to me. Oh, there's a little bud right at the bottom. Oh, there's another little bud there as well. Ooh, I like this. Sorry, just before I go. See that one there? Oof, very nice. Philodendrons, go on my friend blood. Really nice. Do recommend. Right, another one that was to hand, and the new leaf on this looks like it's going to be fantastic. This is not meant to represent a variegated one, this is just meant to represent the plant. It just so happens that the one I could grab, I think this one's way too big, this one is variegated. But this here is Philodendron UPI. Very much an acquired taste, honestly. This is a cutting, so it's literally, I don't know if you can see that, there is not a lot going on in the pot, so if it looks wobbly, that's why. So yes, variegated UPI. Got a bit of a history. Can't remember when this was discovered, but basically the botanist that discovered this plant thought it was a different plant that had essentially been eaten by insects in the wild. And I've always thought that was funny until I've looked at my uh, plant upstairs. Now my plant upstairs, if anyone has seen it recently, that thing is huge. Like the leaves are getting to the point where they're as long as my arms. They are really, really big. That is full maturity, that plant. It's not going to get much bigger than that. It's funny because the top here near the petiole insertion looks like it's actually been nibbled and I don't feel like you can see it on the more juvenile specimens. If I show you that up close just so you can see what I'm talking about. That's the shape of the leaf by the way. Very much an acquired taste, I will not lie. But up here anyway, on a mature one, it genuinely does look like it's been nibbled. It just becomes a little bit more ripply, a little bit more weird. I mean, the fact that they're so variable and uneven anyway, look, makes it look a bit nibbled. So it's a bit of a weird plant. But yeah, this is generally just to represent any UPI. It doesn't have to be variegated, literally. I think this is the only variegated one I've got. You guys know I got it in a while ago. I have a lot of green ones. Love the plant. Love the plant. Again, not everyone's cup of tea. And I, I can't say that I don't get it because I do. Because look at that. That is what you're getting yourself in for with a philodendron UPI. Does variegation make it better? In this case, maybe, actually, because I always say this. Sometimes variegation improves a plant. Sometimes for me personally, it ruins it. I actually think this might improve the plant a little bit. Just gives it a little bit more interest. I don't know what you think about that because I actually quite like that. I'm going to pop him down. He's really good. I think they still have a value to them. Not quite what they were. Obviously, the variegated will. Mm, variegated. But the green ones still have a value to them, but I think they're a lot lower than what they were. So if you're looking to get one, I think we're at a really good time to get them. So put him down because he's very wobbly. But that is Philodendron UPI. Okay, this one is a little sweetheart. And again, this is not meant to represent a variegated one. This is because I only have this one in here. I do have a normal one on the wall, but I can't see it on the wall, which means it's probably dead. And if you don't know, my living wall has had a plethora of issues and it's probably going to have to come down very shortly. So a lot of it is, it's not good. It's not good. You will get a video on it at some point, probably me taking it down. It'll be really, really sad, but it has to happen. So anyway, this here is so underrated. It is so underrated. And again, not talking about the variegated one. This is Philodendron Hastartum. Hastartum, not Subhastartum. Subhastartum is a different plant and it's basically not silver. That's all you need to know. But this one, I will show you the variegation because the leaves just come out. You see it there? This is all the rage at the minute, I will say that. That's going to... There we go. don't really want it. I don't want it reflecting. There we go. There, if I show you that there. It's got yellow variegation in it, but due to the silver tone of the plant, it just comes off really creamy. It's quite a nice plant. But honestly, 
I like the plant without it. I love these plants. These are so, so, so underrated. And when they get mature, they change shape completely. If you don't know what they look like mature, you need to literally Google like Philodendron Hastatum mature or Philodendron Silver Sword mature because that's the other name these go by. They're so cute, guys. They're so cute. If you want a variegated one, go for it. If not, feel free to enjoy them as they are because they're so nice. Look at the color of that. Look at the color of that. They are climbers. So as you can probably tell, if I just swizzle that background, that is what they do. So if you want to propagate, I wait for these roots to be a little bit longer and snip, snip, snip. These are really, really nice. I think I will wait for this one to grow a bit more before I cut that. Plus the variegation is actually only increasing throughout the plant. The rest of the plant isn't actually that variegated at all. You probably can't tell. I'm not sure. We get a little bit of variegation lower down. Then we get a little bit more here. And now we've just started to get something really pretty here. So I would like to leave him. Ben, if you're watching this, I don't want this to be cut. I want this to be as it is because Ben likes to just come in and cut things. Love this plant. So underrated. Can't even begin to describe. They're in garden centers. Obviously not the variegates, although you never know, you might get lucky, but really, really good plant. Awesome, 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 awesome plants. So pretty. Right. Speaking of what I just mentioned before of the fact that Ben just cuts things and doesn't ask me. So you might remember when I hold this plant up, some of you might remember a repot with me a while ago where I repotted this plant and I made it all cute and it was really nice and I put it into a little to choose pot and everything was great. Everything was literally great. And I came back a couple of weeks later and the head was just lobbed off and I still have the butt cut of it somewhere that just looks terrible because the head's been lobbed off it even though I just repotted it to keep so that's fun. But I think this is the head of it and it hasn't done very well because it was cut before its time because there's no aerials on it. Can you see where I'm going with this? However, it's probably the closest thing I've got to show you a nice version of this plant. And this is a plant that I don't see people mentioning a lot. It's kind of like a different version of a plant that's actually on my wish list. But this here is, what is it? It's philodendron. Is it just SP silver or something? Something like that. It's basically a heart shape. Hopefully you can see. And it's got a really weird silvery tone. It's not really green at all. There's another leaf here, but it's, it's not doing so well. But you might be able to see that that's just not pure green. It's definitely quite weird looking in silver. It's not dying, although no, it is not doing very well. But that's kind of what he looks like. He is a little bit maroonish on the back of the plant, like that, can you see? And he's got deeper stems, but he comes in a little bit like that. And I just think he is cool as hell. And I love him so much. So. He could look a lot better. He should look a lot better because I planted him up absolutely stunning. And then Ben came along with a pair of scissors. So that's why we have this. Pretty sad. If this does well, I will claim this one and keep growing it because the other one looks really, really sad. We will see how it goes. So yeah, I think it goes by the name of Philodendron SP Platinum Silver or something. I'm not entirely sure, but he is very cute. And I do, I do quite like him. He's got very, very, very unusual color. Hopefully it does come off on camera how unusual the color is if I just move it in the light. Definitely not green. Definitely a really weird bluey silver tint. Not as much as the Philodendron Hastartum. Obviously, that's very silver. But it's still nice. And I really like him. And despite the mishap, I do have high hopes for him. So there you go. Oh, why is everything doing this now? Everything is just buckling, honestly. Okay, so this is a wonderful plant. I have a couple of these. It's not my big one upstairs. This is just one down here that actually hasn't been propagated and it probably should, to be honest. This here is the gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous Philodendron Whipple Way. I've noticed a little bit of something, something on the internet recently. I just want to say one thing. It's not the same as a Philodendron Snowdrift. Philodendron Snowdrift will do a similar thing to this, but it's a completely different shape and it grows completely differently. That's all I'll say. They do do similar things, but I think a lot of people have been saying that Philodendron Snowdrift is this. It's not. It's a completely different plant. So I just wanted to clear that up because I've seen a lot of things on the internet. But that said, these plants are great and they propagate really well, guys. They grow really quick. They propagate well. They keep their color really nice. Like if you look at this plant, hopefully without me tipping lecker, they never really go fully green. They're always quite minty. I mean, look at that. That's just amazing. They've kept pink for ages. Literally some of the pink stuff is like the older leaves. That's probably because I had them in higher light because it was smaller and they were on shorter shelves. I've moved it over to a shelf higher up now. So that's probably why you're not getting as much pink. But if you want more pink, you know what to do. You feel me. But yeah, absolutely great plants. I've had a great run from them. They've been a fantastic investment for me. 
and people can't get enough of them. And I get it, I get it. It's really pretty plant to have. Really, really pretty plant to have. If you don't like pastel sort of colours, then maybe you'll hate this. Or you don't like frosted things, you maybe hate this. But I really like it. So the main attributes of this plant is that it comes in pink like this, this beautiful milkshake colour. And then it fades down to like almost a cream sometimes. And then it'll go to a minty green. Not only that, but you get these cute little flecks all over. And the whole plant has it. So if I show you that there as well. Hopefully it focuses. The whole plant has it. Now, some plants you can get with more dark bits on than others. I have noticed those on the internet. It's, again, it's all philodendron whip away. It's just down to whatever that plant does. So I wouldn't say it was any different. It's certainly not a different plant anyway. It is the same plant. It just has a little bit more green. I quite like just the little spray painted green because I think if you're going to have this, that's probably what you're going for. You're going for the minty greeny pink color. But how nice is that? That's such a good plant, guys. Such a good plant. Philodendron whip away. Absolutely stunning. In love with it. Still, after all this time. Let's talk about this guy. This guy used to be variegated. This is my original variegated one that just didn't want to variegate ever. Well, I think it brought it back for a little bit and then it just went. This is, was my variegated Billetai. So now it's just my Billetai. He's still nice. He's still growing well. I don't think there's any hope for him. I can't see a single speck of variegation in any of it. But he has quite short petioles, this guy. I don't know why. He just hasn't really decided to climb out much. He's obviously had a lot of light. But these are great plants. I find them really tough, to be honest. They're a little bit mm, hit and miss when they grow roots. They're very hit and miss with shipping. Sometimes you can get, you know, a good experience. Sometimes you get a really bad experience. But generally speaking, do I recommend the plant? Yes, 100%. I think they're absolutely brilliant. And when you see them big and growing really long, they're really nice. So the main characteristic of the plant is one, these lovely leaves with these lovely big ears. Reasonably long leaf, I would say, quite sagittate, which is arrow shape. And the, the main thing, again, the other characteristic, and hopefully you can see it here with the new leaves. Oh, yes, you can. That beautiful orange stem. That is sexy. That's really sexy to me. I think I have some normal billeti anyway, just at the top of the shop. I need to bring them down because I, I don't see them sold much. I don't know why that is. I feel like they go through periods where people want them, and then all of a sudden they're just not sold anymore. I don't know why that is. If anyone knows why that is, do let me know. Yeah, there's still a tag in here that you might be able to see there. It says variegated bill, but he ain't. He ain't anymore. Is he still cute? Absolutely. He was one of my first sort of longer, more exotic plants that I ever got, so... He will always hold a special place in my heart, but he might go in my house, you know, because he's quite tough and leathery. I think he would actually take really nicely in my house. I just want plants in my house that I don't have to worry about, and theoretically, he could be one of them. Philodendron bellitae, also known as billetier. I realize that's, you know, the correct pronunciation. I just keep forgetting. I'm probably always going to forget. This plant I have a love-hate relationship with, and I will explain again why I don't love this plant. This here is Philodendron giganteum variegatum basically variegated giganteum. You can get regular giganteum. I borderline have one in the corner because it reverted. So this is a really cool plant and it grows absolutely huge. And when I say huge, I literally, bigger than me, easily, not a problem, absolutely monumentally big. The thing I don't like about it is absolutely displayed here. Basically, the thing I complain about this plant is the length of the petiole compared to the size of the leaf is not my favorite, right? If I'm having a big paddly heart-shaped or whatever philodendron, I want a long petiole, fine, but I need something to balance this out. And this don't do it for me. And it's not a lack of feed or a lack of light thing. Yes, that will make it worse and it will really, really make it worse. Like literally don't don't do it. Don't do it. If, if you don't have high enough light, don't even buy one of these things. I'm telling you now, just don't. Just don't. But this is probably the best you could get, this newest leaf here, which might not have even finished growing, let's be honest. And to be fair, this, that, that is nice. There's a lot of variegation. Hopefully it will actually focus on it. Please. Thank you. I hope it does. Hopefully it doesn't just look for me. It is nice. It's just, I just take issue with this can you see that? I just take issue with this. And it is literally nearly everyone. You can get them a bit stumpier, don't get me wrong. This hasn't had the best run. These haven't been grown in my conditions. The new one has, funny enough, which is nice because it's the best one. But generally, literally, that's the best Thailand can do. So if you could do better, great. But generally, you might be stuck with this kind of thing. So as cool as it is, I just think maybe not. If you want a big philodendron, I'm not sure I'd go down this route. Let me know what you think. And I will show you this leaf again, actually, because it's very, very cute. See that? Come on. Look at that. That is a very nice leaf. I will give it that. That is sort of worth the show and tell. But yeah, not my favorite whatsoever. 
Ah, oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. So before I tell you what this is, literally we have a bit of an issue. This is a new leaf and it's just grown a bit funky. So I will show you the new leaf because that, that is hot. Can we agree? That is hot. Oh, and also to note that that looks greeny. It will fade to this. So just in case you needed to know what happens, they come in like this, they fade to this. So this, if you can't tell, this is Philodendron Florida Beauty and it's gorgeous. And I still love these plants. I've always loved these plants. They're not the easiest things to take care of. They are a nightmare to propagate. I've said this a million times. Do not propagate without an aerial root. You'll lose it 100%. But they're very, very nice plants. This one's lovely and mature. Look at this, literally. Oh boy, that is really pretty. You might notice here the variegation's not, it's not yellow, it's not white. It is literally in between. It's like a cream color. And honestly, it's really, really nice. It's a really nice plant. This is how they grow. They are climbers. Obviously, they can grow a little bit nicer than this. This one's been wedged into a tray, so it, it could be better. It's not bad though, is it? It's okay, really. This is how they grow. You do get a little bit more legginess than, say, the Hastartum that I showed you earlier on, that silver one. But it's nothing, it's nothing too bad, you know. You can also put many of these up the one pole and get it a bit bushier, which I kind of recommend a little bit. But that's kind of what it grows like there, just so you can see what is going on. So it is quite decent. This, if I cut that there, that'll propagate fine. There's some aerials, I'm not worried, even down there. By the time you get to the more woody aerials, I'd probably start to worry a little bit. But gorgeous plants. I'm not sure they'll ever stop being in fashion. I don't want them to because I just think they're amazing. Like, that's lovely. Do we have any other nice ones? Yeah, we have some less variegated ones, but generally that's really nice. If you like this plant, but you don't want to have the, the worry of losing variegation, there's always the Phil Denver and Florida Ghost, which doesn't do exactly the same thing as this, but it, it sort of does really, it sort of goes to this shape. So that's a plant that starts out like a whitey color, a bit like the Whipple Way, and then it just fades down. So that's really nice as well. So if you don't want a one that's variegated, then you go for that. If you don't like that at all, there's Philodendron Podatum that I do have. It's just on the wall and there is no way I can get it. It's all green. So if you don't want any variegation at all, you don't want any tricks, you don't want any, any changing at all, you can literally get a green one of these. So if you like the shape, because it does change with maturity, if you see that one there, it does change, then there are options for you. So I would absolutely look that up because they're, oh, they're so worth it. They're so worth it. So yes, there's Philodendron Florida Beauty. Honestly, not to be missed out on. And you can get cuttings of this now on Facebook and stuff like that. It'll be a single leaf and it might be obviously not this size, but probably worth it if you can get one. Okay, so those are all the physical plants I've got to show you. I'm just going to go through a few photos just in case I have to do a lot of photos in the future. It'll just break some of that up, basically. So you'll still see some plants, but there will be photographs. So I'm just going to stand right here like that. Hopefully that is enough room. So what have we got? I've got them written down. First one I want to talk about very quickly is the Philodendron Micans. Oh my god, this is the most underrated vining Philodendron there is. And you need it. You need it. It's beautiful and dark coloured. You can get it nearly anywhere, I think. You should be able to get it in a nice hanging pot. And it's velvety, it's heart shaped, it's just amazing. And when you get it big and pretty, you know about it. Okay, it's such a good plant and I genuinely hope I've got a really beautiful picture to show you. I'm sure I have because mine upstairs, it's a little bit thinning out on the top where it's had some underwatering and it started to lose the lower leaves first. So the lower leaves in that case would be the leaves at the top of the plant, obviously, because it's hanging down. But the rest of it looks amazing and I have to cut that thing all the time because it will grow across the room on the floor. It's that quick. It's a really, really good plant. So if you haven't been able to try it out and you see one, honestly, honestly try it out because they're gorgeous. Need to see and get variegated ones. I do have a couple upstairs. I think I have a couple elsewhere in the shop, but I really just want to talk about that one because it's definitely the prettiest because it's the biggest and it's all fluffy and great. And I absolutely should put that in the house. I don't know where I'm going to put that, but that needs to come back to the house. And it's something that looks a bit more exotic without having to spend the money, really because they should be quite affordable where you are. After that, we have the gorgeous Philodendron El Choco Red. I can't remember if it changed its name, guys. So some of you might be commenting going, no, 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 it's not that anymore, it's this. It might well be, I'm not sure, I cannot remember. 
I feel like that happened. I feel like I'm not making that up, but I haven't showed you it because one, it's actually not in the best shape, if I'm honest. It's had a few problems of watering since it got here. Basically, it was very happy at home. It's got here and it slowly hated its life. So I will show you an older picture of it. That's probably next to me now. That's about that. I do have some cuttings of Choco in the shop, but they're tiny, they've been neglected. So they need restarted, I think. Maybe because I don't see anybody really growing it anymore. I've talked about that before. It is genuinely quite difficult to grow Choco, especially if you're doing it to sell. It's no easy feat. The plant itself is easy if it's established and it's in a pot and you're not going to touch it and not try and upset it in any way. But if you're actually trying to propagate from it and grow it, not so good, not so good. It's not the toughest. But it is a very beautiful plant. And hopefully I've showed you my favorite picture of my Choco, which is how red it can go when it emerges. As they get mature, they do lose the red a little bit. But personally, it's taken a hell of a long time to lose it on my plant. Hopefully, if you all have got Chocos, you are as lucky as me and you've got some really nice ones. But I know for a while, people were buying Chocos, not necessarily of me, of, of anybody. And they were saying, oh, this isn't red or mine isn't as red as yours or what's the matter with it is it even a choco i think it's a maturity thing but i also do think some of them just have a little bit more better genetics could you say maybe would that be fair to say next one is oh right the only reason i'm not showing you this and this does look beautiful i took a picture of it the other day is because i cannot hold this up it's in two pots it's crawling across another pot that i've sort of put in front of it but that is and it's either philodendron pastazanum silver or philodendron pastazanum white it's one of the two but it's basically, it looks like a pastazanum and it has a hell of a lot of silver on it. And it's the most beautiful thing. It's a little bit shorter in the petiole length than a pastazanum, which makes it, in my opinion, a lot more attractive because pastazanum is a little bit gangly. This one, I'm looking at it just off frame. That's where I'm looking. It's definitely a lot shorter. My gosh, it's gorgeous though. It is so, so pretty. So that has to go on here in my collection. I wish I could hold it up but it's just a little bit too big. And honestly, it's probably gonna need cut because it's not really movable anymore. I could put it in a bigger pot, but it's already a bit long for that. So I feel like we're just gonna have to propagate it and sell bits of it. And I will try again from the mother plant and put that in a bigger pot. We'll see. He's so cute. I don't know what to do with him. And I don't really want to ruin him, but if I don't do something soon, he's going to grow down off the second pot and then we absolutely have to do something. So they're so easy to grow as well. Literally really, really easy to grow. Pastas on them generally aren't too bad to grow from what I remember. I haven't had a full pastas on them in my shop for years, like literally years, like three years, but I don't feel like I need to because I have that. And I just feel like if people want them, they'd more likely go for that. Maybe that's my bias. Great plant though, literally, I'm obsessed with it, I love it. And I probably should have one in my house because they're really, really nice. Next plant I want to talk about, I've just cut some up this morning. Philodendron Florida Ghost, oh my God. Literally one of my favorite plants ever of all time. It's definitely there. I need to do a video, let's do one, of my top favorite plants of all time. And I will really, really sit there and think about it and try and come up with my top 10 maybe. And I mean like favorites and it doesn't just have to be philodendron monster or whatever. I'm really, really gonna go for it. I think that would be really, really cool. But I can tell you now, spoiler alert, that plant would be in it because it's just so pretty. It's so pretty. When the leaves get really, really nice and white and the stems are bright red, oh my God, nothing better. I think it goes through a beautiful sort of leaf cycle to maturity. I think the leaves just end up looking so good at nearly every stage, apart from when it's like really tiny and it's just a beautiful plant. You can get them in garden centers. They do tend to cost a bit more money. You get them at different sizes as well, but they don't grow unbelievably quick. They don't size up that well. So if you want a one that's hefty, you might have to buy one that is already hefty. So you might want to go to a garden center and buy, you know, the ones in like the six inch, the eight inch pots just to get a good start on it. That's not to say you can't grow it big, obviously, but I just feel like the garden centers just do it better. You know what I mean? The growers in Netherlands do better when it comes to ghosts, so. It is officially ghost season, guys. They, for some reason, I've said this before, for some reason they just come out in spring. I don't know why, literally, I don't get it, but it's spring now, so if you want one, have a look out for one, and hopefully you can get one. Literally one of my favorite plants of all time. The next plant, and I forgot I had it, and I do have it, it's just, I have so much reverted of it, I don't know where the non-revert stuff is, it's somewhere, God knows where. But the next one I want to talk to you about is the Philodendron Green Congo Variegated, but again, you can throw away the variegated, it's fine, just call it Green Congo. That I could have held up, actually, to be fair, I think I've got one just over there. Um, really nice plant, actually. I don't really care for the Green Congo, I think it's just a bit boring. The structure of it's quite nice, but the variegated one actually looks amazing, it looks really nice, and because the leaves are so like thick and leathery they don't really burn as much they kind of hold their own a little bit 
in chipping and in just highlight. So I really, really like that plant. I won't linger on that too much because honestly, I don't actually have a lot of experience with that plant at all. I bought one in and it's the picture you're looking at and it's since been chopped up because we buy things to sell things, unfortunately. We can't just always keep them the way they are. But yeah, great plant. Obviously, needless to say, they're unstable. Obviously, because it's variegated and you're propagating it, but I love the plant. I think I've had a good yield off it. I don't know. Maybe I haven't, actually. As I say, it was one plant. I'll find out. I need to find out where it's gone, if we even have any. I think we have, like, tiny, tiny, tiny ones, like this big, that have been grown from wet sticks, which, to be honest, tells me that I might not have had the best time propagating that in terms of variegation, not in terms of ease, because I have a hell of a lot of green ones that are just growing beautifully, so. But yeah, very nice plant. If you're gonna get one, maybe don't get it to cut from, maybe just get it to enjoy it because mm, it's not the easiest thing. The other one that I've had, and I've had more success, I think, in cutting it would be the Philodendron Wendimbe. I think that's how you say it. Obviously mine was variegated. I have obviously had a lot of green offcuts from it, but I have had a lot of good variegates as well, and it's been quite quite well done. I think it's because the internodal spacing is quite short. The plant is a little bit more forthcoming with leaves in a more, how do you say, like a more circular formation. Therefore, I think you get a better spread of variegation. I think it's easier that way. So that is a really nice plant as well. It's not my favorite or anything. It's just one that, again, I bought to sell. But I actually do like that, and it has given me a really nice yield. And I remember, I think the variegation on it, the white variegation is like, it's quite crisp and white. So if that's something you're looking for, then you might like it. I haven't really seen a picture of an all green one. Like I have all green ones that have failed variegation, but they're so young. I can't really make anything of it, if you know what I mean. I don't really know what the full plant is like, but I think for me in this case, it's definitely a variegated one that I would prefer. Right, that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 plants, just in that, just in that. That is nowhere near my philodendron collection. I promise you, I'll probably have at least maybe that again twice. I don't know. And I will try and give you another part to this as soon as I can. Literally, guys, it involves me going up onto my shelves and getting stuff. I know there's some stuff I haven't put in here anyway, like I have my golden dragon. I have stuff like that. I think I have plow money eye. I have a few different things, obviously, that I haven't gone in. I just need a bit of time to sort that because there is stuff everywhere. You're seeing a small portion of this. So, yeah, at some point I will do that. I've literally, I've just looked there. There's some splendid... Oh my God, there's stuff everywhere. Thank you very much for watching this video today. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you in the next one. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. If you'd like to see any more of my content, such as this, such as other things, maybe my other collections, maybe some other informational stuff, then please feel free to subscribe. That's it for this week's video, guys. I will love you and leave you. Have a fantastic weekend and I will undoubtedly see you in the next video. Bye, guys.